Tropical Storm Dujuan, locally known as Ring here in the Philippines, remains at that tropical storm intensity, but we are starting to see a little bit of wind shear interact on it as it nears that landfall here across eastern locations of Mindanao. The big threat with this is going to be the flooding. In fact, you take a look at water vapor imagery, still plenty of convection circulating in here. Already seeing some of those heavier showers move on shore across northeastern portions of the country. If you remember, about a decade ago, we had a storm system that was very similar, tracked a little bit further towards the south, but across uh, Cagayan de Oro, you had some serious flooding. Over a thousand deaths occurred because of a storm system of similar intensity. So the flood threat across this portion of the Philippines is real, and that's really going to be one of the big things I want to stress before I get into the details but with this up update. So if you live anywhere near a river across uh, northern and eastern portions up in the now in southeastern Visayas and you're watching this or you got friends or family out here, make sure they're taking those proper precautions for flooding and landslides. Winds right now at 45, gusting up to 55 knots, according to the Joint Typhoon Warning Center. That leaves us squarely at a tropical storm. Here's the key thing. That is about the peak intensity they are expecting with this storm, with a gradual weakening as it tracks off towards the north and west. By the way, 45 knots, about 85 kilometers per hour, for those of you using those international scales. This is multiple tracks. You can see here, color-coded in the top right, we got Pagan. Gasa, we got JMA, GDWC, CWV, which is Taiwan, and HKO, which is Hong Kong. All of them very similar tracks, and I like to show the different agencies because these are made by meteorologists, not numerical or model guidance, and all of them agree <clears throat> on the projection of this storm system. This here showing you those probability of at least tropical storm strength winds across eastern areas of Mindanao. Obviously a very high chance of tropical storm strength conditions. But if you look over towards Sirigao, a little bit less, but still a decent chance of these tropical storm. That's 35 knots or greater. But over towards Cebu, kind of a moderate chance as that system moves overhead. And then even eventually in the Metro Manila, I know you've been watching there. I do think you're going to get a little bit of rainfall, but tropical Tropical storm strength conditions further towards north, very unlikely because this storm system will be weakening out. Even the latest track from the Joint Typhoon Warning Center. Yeah, we're peaked out right now, about 45, gusting up to 55 knots. But watch as it tracks towards the west. Look at these intensities here. If you look closely, we have that sustained wind continuing to drop off to about 35. So barely a tropical storm and then eventually becoming a tropical depression as it moves north of Pelawan. There's a few reasons for this, and one is land interaction, of course, right? The mountains of northeastern Mindanao are going to rip this storm apart just a bit, but this is the bigger one. I've been talking about this for about a week now, how that interaction between the cold surge and our tropical system is going to eventually weaken it. One thing it is doing right now, it is providing a bit of outflow. We do have that shear, which is kind of giving it a burst of convection just prior to landfall here. The thing is too much shear, over 15, 20 knots, rip systems apart, not to mention the cool dry air to go with it. This is microwave imagery and it shows you how much moisture content is in the atmosphere. And uh, these darker areas of red, yeah, that's some pretty heavy rainfall. If all the rain fell out of one of those darker areas at one specific time, you see in the legend there, about two and a half to three inches, upwards of 70 to 100 millimeters would fall. That's just basically kind of giving you an idea of how much moisture is here. But look at all this dry air flowing in from the north. This is a killer for tropical systems and it is filtering in to our, our ring here as it moves off towards the north and west. Thus, I do anticipate that weakening. You see in the track that weakening is going to be there. And we're already seeing that this morning, this is what the satellite picture looked like. And this evening, this is what it looks like now. You don't have to be a meteorologist to see the difference uh, kind of in the uh, structure of the system. Another look at that wind shear and that analysis, 30 to 40 knots is really going to rip this apart. You need 15 knots or lower uh, of wind shear for a productive tropical system. Dvorak analysis, what we use as well to kind of gauge the intensity of a storm already looks like it kind of peaked out and now we're kind of whittling here and eventually it should start to drop off as it moves over Mindanao. So the rapid intensification fears, a fear of a typhoon, take that off the table. The big threat is, like I said at the beginning of this, it is the rainfall. And yeah, we do have gusty conditions. Here this 
Uh, Saturday morning, tropical storm strength conditions all along the eastern seaboard. Davao, one of the biggest population areas here across Mindanao. Actually, <clears throat> you're not really going to be seeing significant winds with this because it's going to be coming in from the north really being sheltered by those mountains further towards uh, central locations of the island, but off towards the north and east. Yeah, those tropical storm strength winds are going to be ever so present, even back towards eastern areas of Samar. Tacloban, I've heard it's pretty chilly there. That's because of those cool northerly winds on the northern periphery of this, continuing to sweep in all the way down towards Visayas. You're going to still be looking at those gale conditions, but not really too damaging. <clears throat> this is the big threat. Saturday evening. We're going to be looking at that rainfall continuing to increase in these darker areas 40 to 50 millimeters per hour of precipitation so the flood threat is very real my friends i i said it 20 times already and i can't stress it enough as we go ahead into sunday morning you still get that rainfall threat it is going to start to switch from mindanao over towards Visayas as our system moves off here yes it is interacting with that cold surge but it still is going to be having moisture with it the cold surge is kind of buffering it keeping most of luzon dry heading into monday some of that could lift back towards the north as our system moves off here towards the west but there is some disparity in the model guidance by Monday over towards Tuesday. I'm showing you ECMWF. It does show more moisture here, even over towards Manila, but GFS almost completely dissipates it out here. I'm leaning more towards kind of what this guidance is showing, thus I'm showing it to you. I have a different options of what I'm gonna show you here in these videos, but I think it is kind of overdoing that moisture back towards Manila. This is actually more like it heading into Monday evening. Kind of see what I'm talking about here with those spotty showers, our system here. But overall, it does continue to get disrupted here by Monday over towards Tuesday. So how about the five day rainfall threat? Where is that highest threat of flooding? Well, as I mentioned time and time again, northeastern Mindanao, northern areas of Mindanao, southeastern Visayas, all the way across towards Cebu. That's where that th flood threat is going to be here with river flooding because of the continuous rainfall. You get some of this volcanic soil that has get soaked up. You are looking at that threat of landslide. So don't be driving in some of those rural mountainside roadways and stay off the, the uh, boats, the ferries. My goodness, very, very dangerous if you want to head out there. By midweek, here's one other thing. So there's still a lot of questions here, but I want to mention it. By mid next week, if this system maintains any sort of organization over uh, towards the uh, west of the Philippines, we could be looking at a little bit of moisture inflow wrapping it around it, which would bring some scattered showers across northern areas of Luzon. A lot of question marks with this. If it goes the route of completely getting disrupted, then this would be a less likely scenario. But based on some of the guidance right now, if even if it maintains tropical depression status, it still could pull in that moisture by the mid to latter part of next week. And here's the main points for now. And I want to stress what's happening now and the biggest impacts at this time. A flood threat remains in place with this cold surge, which is going to likely be weakening it. But questions about that long range forecast that I just shown you a second ago, but all about that flood threat guys and i hope everybody's staying safe out there if you have any photos or videos or anything like that or reports hit me up on one of these social media platforms you can share those photos with me here and i will try my best to get them in these video updates please subscribe to this channel if you haven't already that really really helps thank you very much who's been donating and just helping me out here also don't forget to check out westernpacificweather.com i keep on forgetting to put that here on the leak but it is the same name as this youtube channel westernpacificweather.com. All right. Please stay safe out there, guys. Be smart. I know it's a tropical storm. I know the signal force warnings are just at one at this time for those areas being warned on. Uh, and you just be smart. If you are being warned on, take the storm seriously because definitely is going to be having a big flood threat here across southern half of the Philippines. Thanks for watching.